Yellow cultists, this is Helios, and welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. So today, I'm kind of going to be doing something a little bit new on my channel. I haven't done this in a really long time. I don't think I've done this since the PTB when Ghostface got buffed, I think is the last time that I did a video of this nature. Um, but I'm just going to do kind of a little unedited little discourse video for you guys to kind of talk with me about. Um... And I want to talk about Billy. Um, if you see in this uh, this tweet here, I did tweet this a little bit ago. Um, I basically was referring to people who say that they only go against Billy's that back rev, or they only go against like uh, Billy is too easy. Is basically what a lot of people say. And I basically just said, you know, you you cannot like Billy. Billy, you cannot. You can say he's overtuned. You can even say he should be re nerfed. Uh, that's your opinion, and uh, I I don't really like arguing with people about it. Uh, let's be for real, you're not going against somebody with 3,000 hours in Billy every time you get them. Most of the Billies you get are new, most of them suck. I don't mean that as an insult, just most of them are pretty low skill level. Um, Billy is only free to players who have actually mastered him. And what I mean by that is Billy will seem free to people who are playing against him when you go against somebody that has mastered the killer. And that's really with any killer. Like any good, strong killer, I think Nurse, Blight, uh, now Billy, Spirit, those killers in pubs, if somebody has mastered their killer, will absolutely destroy every lobby they go into, with the exceptions of the few people that get sniped by comp teams or sniped by people running really strong shit in broken maps. Like, that's pretty much the norm amongst really strong killers in the game. So, I just think it's weird how this conversation has always shifted to Billy since his buff, um, and that, that he's the one that's easy, and he's the one that, you know... He's free now. And I think a lot of this conversation actually comes from people who um, are used to Billy being a novelty. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, you know, Billy used to be a pretty weak killer. So I feel like when a lot of people have that, that mindset, that view on Billy, they're coming at it at, from a point of view that they're used to Billy being perceived as a difficult, hard to master, um, and, you know, just like difficult killer overall. Um, now, he is still difficult. Um, I have tried to get, get a lot of people into Billy. I actually do uh, do little coaching sessions from time to time. Um, and even new players will struggle with new, new Billy. They will. Um, because even the new turn rate actually adds more challenges than, than initially because it's actually a lot easier for them to over-curve now, um, which is something they're not used to. And um, I think in opening up new possibilities for his power, it does make him more of a, a killer that's hard to get to get in depth into and to master, um, just because of how much how much more depth has been added to his kit now. Um, but anyway, uh, basically, I just said all abilities are new. Most of them suck. You know, free players master them. I already talked about that. If you still get shit on my ability, it's still a skill issue, with the exception of being low pro. Because fuck that add-on rework is needed. Um, we're going to talk about all the things I want to change with Billy soon. Um, also, I apologize for the glare. There's not really much I can do about it, and I literally can't see without these. So <laughs> you got to bear with me. Um, but we're going to go on ahead and uh, move on to something else here. I'm going to go on ahead and pull up uh, my little Google Doc that I have here. There we go. Um, these are the main four issues that I want to address with Billy. Um, the first one being low pro synergy with buffs. Uh, uh, low pro synergy with the buffs and popular perks. Uh, so the main thing that I see people complain about when it comes to Billy, um, at least recently, has been low pro. Um, I, I love low pro flicks and things like that. I personally don't like doing them because I see a low pro nerf coming in the future. Uh, and I don't really want to... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get so used to using it um, in my kit if I know it's going to get nerfed. Um, I, I do see it coming eventually. So this is a change that I actually do see the bet devs doing at some point. Um, I also just don't really think low pro flicks are that impressive, <laughs> uh, but that's just a personal thing, but we're not going to talk too much about that. Um, so low pro synergy with buffs, what I mean by this is with overdrive being in the game, with the cooldown reduction, low pro is a powerhouse, like just putting it straight. You, you will put survivors in situations where they literally cannot win. They are going to take either a low pro hit a straight back rev or an m1 they're going to take one of the three in most scenarios if you're playing correctly there is very few tiles in the game where low pro can't outplay it low pro is one of those add-ons now with the buff that it it is actually overtuned and actually unfair <laughs> so 
Um, I think, obviously, you know, there's going to be people that are like, you know, oh, well, you, you just have to predict and stuff, you know. Billy has always been a prediction killer, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm the first person that will say that. Billy will always be a killer that on both sides, he is very prediction heavy. Um, nowadays, not so much playing him, because you can play a lot more reactive, and if you're playing very uh, zone heavy and very smart, you actually can be a lot more reactive. Um, you still do have to predict survivor pathing sometimes, um, which actually goes hand in hand in zoning. Uh, but for the most part, you can play him a lot more reactive and not predict as much when playing as him. But Survivor, you've always had to predict him a little bit. Um, as far as his, uh, the use of popular perks, um, which is another big complaint, is Lopro and Bam together basically make every single tile the exact same play. Like, it, it plays out the same. You Bam Window, Force Palette, get a free hit. Bam Window, Force Palette, get a free hit. That's basically what Bam becomes. Um, and it's just very unfun to go against. Every single pallet, with the exception of like maybe a few, can be forced for a hit if the if the if the Billy plays well. Um, now obviously not every Billy is going to be perfectly. There's going to be missed opportunities from both sides there. Um, but for the most part, Lopro just puts survivors in lots of lose lose scenarios that I think is very very unnecessary, um, and just not needed in the current state of the game. Um. But yeah, uh, that's what I think about Lopro. Um, the main changes that I think should be made to Lopro to kind of help out with this um, is in things I've kind of said on Twitter before. I think Lopro should have the, the default uh, cooldown that it once had. Um, I think you should... The default ability cooldown was 3 seconds. I think Lopro should go back up to 3 seconds, specifically when you break a pallet. Um, so you would have the normal cooldown if you don't break a pallet, but if you go through a pallet and then end your saw... Uh, you get the normal cooldown. Um, and I think this will help a lot with, uh, with zoning, because uh, one of the main things, uh, when counterplays to, to low pro zoning, uh, especially if you're healthy, mainly when you're healthy, um, is to purposefully get hit with low pro so that you can make distance and not be zoned. Um, but with the new buffs, that kind of doesn't fucking work. Because if he runs low pro, even, even without low pro Thompson mix, if he runs low pro engraving or low pro boots or anything like that, um, even if he hits you and you like unzone yourself, because of how strong low pro is in his kit, it really doesn't fucking matter. Because with overdrive and the cooldown nerfs and everything, you don't actually make that much difference distance. Um, and if even if you make it to a pallet, he has he has low pro and he can guarantee a hit there. So I just think you know limiting the cooldown um would uh, make it a little bit easier to play against on the survivor pov to help uh with counter zoning um and make it a little bit uh, easier to play against uh we'll also mean the skill aspect of it um i also think that uh low pro as a whole uh shouldn't work in overdrive um and what i mean by that is overdrive shouldn't work while you have the low pro add on on um, and now I know people would think that that's like a massive nerf and maybe just the cooldown nerf uh, would be enough. Uh, you would have to do it to see. But I think that low pro in overdrive is fucking crazy. <laughs> um, I also kind of see them changing low pro flicks and nerfing them in the future, kind of similar to how they did to uh, J flicking uh, back when that was the thing. Uh, so I kind of see that happening at some point. Uh, but that's another story for another day. Uh, but that's that's low pro. Um, obviously, my opinion, uh, I, you, I can be wrong. Um, and I'm 100% I'm encouraging conversation uh, down in, in, the, in the comments. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to our second point, uh, overdrive activation. Uh, so my point that I actually wrote out here is overdrive activation changes to allow meaningful counter play from survivor side and better ease of use on killer side. Um, and basically what I mean by this is the situations where you're charging at somebody and you get overdrive mid-charge and you hit them, even though without overdrive you wouldn't have hit them. Um, this is a situation that happens to me very often when I play Billy. Um, not so much when I'm playing against him because most of the Billies I go against aren't that great. Uh, but the situations where you would have 100% made a window, 100% made a pallet, etc, etc, but he has overdrive so he hits you at the last second is very unrewarding on the survivor side and killer side. It doesn't feel like you earned that down. It feels like the game gave you that down. Um, so I want to remove that aspect of it. Um, and for easy use on the killer side, it's also very jarring for new players, um, and sometimes even for me when you get overdrive unexpectedly. 
Um, because even though I should be paying attention to my bar all the time, sometimes I just I just miss it, you know. Um, so it makes it a lot less jarring uh, to not get it while you're sprinting. And the idea that I actually had to fix this uh, was to tie overdrive activation specifically to your cooldown. So when you're in your cooldown period, that's when your overdrive activates. Um, and just to kind of make it a little bit uh, more fair so you don't lose out on overdrive time, um, if it does become an issue where you're your bar starts going down before your cooldown is over. I don't think so, because I think overdrive actually takes a second before it starts going down. But if it doesn't, uh, you could just add a little buffer there right before uh, overdrive actually starts, the meter actually starts going down, um, where it doesn't, just so that it only starts going down when you come out of that cooldown. But it activates right when cooldown starts. Um, and I think that would help out with a lot of his problems, um, just or at least his problems involving overdrive. Uh, just because of the, you know, easy use on the killer side. And I think it allows uh, survivors to have a lot more meaningful counterplay because they will always know when the killer has overdrive. And that's another thing is it also prevents billies from holding you at a tile when they're close to overdrive and just feathering the rev back and forth over and over again. Um, so now when you reach overdrive, uh, it would be tied directly to the cooldown. So you don't get it in that chainsaw use. Uh, unless you put your saw down or something like that. You can't get it while charging, is basically what I'm saying. Um, now, obviously, this might be difficult to cold code, so I would also be happy with them. Just make it so you can't earn it while you're charging. Um, and you get it when you start your sprint, rather than getting it any other time. Um, so either at the start of the sprint or during cooldown, I think is the best medium we can get. Um, but at the same time, I do kind of like it being tied to the cooldown or, you know, if you guys have any other ideas, that's the idea I thought of. If you guys have any ideas, you can drop them in the in the comment section. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, that's my idea on it. And I think that would help um, a lot with those problems. Um, so for eerie engraving, slightly overtuned overdrive adds unnecessary difficulty to small skinny tiles. I have lots of clips of this um, and so do lots of other people. Uh, eerie engraving in overdrive um makes it very very difficult to actually get around small obstacles uh and obviously some people are going to say skill issue uh because it isn't impossible i'm not saying it's not possible to do but i'm saying it's unnecessarily difficult if i play the game without iridescent engraving um i can curve around pretty much everything in the game just fine with overdrive without overdrive i have no problems if i run eerie engraving Eerie graving on its own without overdrive, perfect. I have no issue with it. The you know you can play it the same, you can curve around everything. It's perfectly fine. The issue is in overdrive because of how much faster you're going in overdrive. Um, the iridescent engraving stacks with the overdrive speed, and so that causes you to go a lot faster. Um, in fact, if I look up here, let me see what the jump is. So the jump is from 325 normal overdrive all the way up to 390%. That is a massive jump in speed. Um, and obviously, there is a difference in speed here too, um, which is around the same, honestly, in terms of the jump. Uh, but the difference is, is 390 is, I think, too fast to be controlled. Like, I, I, not to be controlled, but I think it's like, it's unrealistically fast for the average player to control. And obviously you can control it and, you know, on some tiles you just have to uh, 90, 90 degree curve it rather than 180 it or uh, aim in tighter than you normally would, which, like I said, is not impossible to do. I just think it makes it unnecessarily difficult. Um, and I think the difference between 390 and 325 are kind of negligible. I think they're approximately the same in terms of gameplay. Uh, obviously people are going to argue with me on that, but like, I can hit the same curves on 325 that I would have hit on 390. I don't think it adds that much to the killer. Uh, obviously, it's certain things like the shack curve where you can go from the door and flip all the way around shack. Um, those you would have to step out a little bit more to do. Because um, I am able to do that without engraving. You just have to walk out and to the left or to the right a little bit more. Um, but you can still do those same curves. It's just different, uh, which I think is fine. Um, but yeah, so 
there's that. So the change that I want to engrave in is I want the actual speed of Billy to be locked at 13 when he starts overdrive, regardless of add-ons. Um, that would mean that eerie engraving would... Eerie engraving is only slightly under. So I think the math that I did, I think it was like 12.9. I actually did it on my phone. Yeah, so 12.69 is what the your speed is with eerie engraving in a chainsaw sprint, a normal chainsaw sprint. So you would only be going up like point... Here, actually, let me do the math. I'm very smart. Uh, let's see. So that would be th about 30-ish percent. Um, you'd only be going up about 30 percent, which is still a jump, but it's not such a drastic jump that it feels jarring. You know what I mean? If anything, I actually think eerie engraving would feel easier to, um, to players who are a little bit more intermediate with Billy. Uh, just because when you go through that jump from like base kit speed to overdrive speed, it can be a little jarring. Um, so I think it might be easier for intermediate players to play, and which I am honestly okay with that because it, ear engraving is hella fun. Um, I just wish it was a little bit less weird in overdrive. Um, and you may be thinking, you know, if you're nerfing it or if you're uh, saying it's overtuned in overdrive, I don't hear anything overtuned about that. Um, I just saying it's overtuned in the sense that it adds unnecessarily difficult and unnecessary difficulty, and excuse me, um, on the survivor side of things, it is very fucking hard to react to eerie engraving. <laughs> like if if you are in a straight away with somebody that has eerie engraving, the chances that they're going to hit you is pretty much guaranteed because of the one second turn rate. Sometimes they can literally just curve into you if you dodge. Um, obviously you can still miss, but I think it's very, very difficult to play against, um, on the survivor end. And it also makes most tiles damn near unplayable. Um, whereas I think normal overdrive speed kind of allows more counterplay on most tiles and you can still go for around the same curves. Um, it's not as crazy as eerie engraving, but I just think normal engraving speed is perfectly fine in terms of, um, overall gameplay for both sides. Um, so that's my suggestion for eerie engraving. My last one, all overdrive related add-ons do little to nothing compared to top seven or so add-ons that add way more value. Um, I might make a little thing after this, uh, kind of demonstrating this. Uh, if I don't, then you won't see it. But uh, basically the overdrive add-ons do very, very little, if anything. Um, and I just think that they, they're just not that great overall. Um, if we go on ahead and check on Billy's add-ons real quick. Um, so we have eerie engraving, obviously. The the top probably seven add-ons that are used are eerie engraving, tune carburetor, low pro, Thompson, uh, grease throttle, off-brand, and spike boots. Those are probably the, the top seven. I believe that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, or four, five, six. And then I said I said seven for this because some people like to do drift Billy. Um the rest of these are pretty garbage. Um, this one's okay. Uh, it, I don't really use it because there's really no point. Uh, Apex Muffler and Filthy Slippers are fine as like gimmick add-ons. That's fine. Uh, increased time for over meter, overdrive meter starts dissipating by 30%. This one's okay, but it's not that great in my opinion, considering how you're missing out on an item slot for that when you could just run off-brand motor oil and get overdrive back constantly. Um, this is about one chainsaw sprint across the map in most maps. So if you run out of overdrive, you literally just cross the map and then you have overdrive again. I, there's been games where I've had uh, an off-brand motor roll where I've had literally overdrive every single chase. Like, it isn't hard to get overdrive, so having it last longer isn't really that valuable to me. Um, also, overdrive is a pretty good indicator of when you should leave chases. Uh, if you go through an entire overdrive without downing somebody, chances are you should probably leave. That's just my personal opinion. That's how I've been playing, and it's been working out a lot better. Because uh, then you get overdrive while you're traveling, and then you get overdrive in the next chase. So you can chain overdrives that way as a way to spread pressure and, and keep the pressure up on the, on the team, as well as increases his map pressure um, a lot. So I just think this one is, it's not bad, but it's also not really useful. Um, uh, air filter increases the time for such plating. Same reason as this one, except worse. Uh, kickback change good for new players. Second stay. 
Uh, speed of which overtime meter dissipates when not using the chainsaw, also useless. Uh, overdrive duration, just not as good as motor oil. Motor oil is just better. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, speed of which overdrive meter dissipates, uh, also useless. Counterweight garbage. Fuck you, retro. Uh, <laughs> uh, primer bulb. I actually really like this add-on. This add-on is really fun. Uh, it gives you your overdrive faster. If you run this with motor oil, you pretty much have overdrive the whole game. Uh, and you have one health state. It's really balanced in the sense that you only do one health state, but you're really, you get overdrive constantly, and overdrive is as strong as Billy will be. Uh, so he's really, really fun. This, this is actually unironically one of my favorite add ons. I like running it when I want to have fun. That's boots can stay, and these can stay. But the main reworks I want to see is I want this add on, this add on. Pretty much everything involving overdrive just needs to be either completely scrapped or reworked. Um, I honestly don't want this many add-ons pertaining to overdrive. I think there should be more add-ons that are more interesting. Um, I also want to go away from an Adrian vial situation where you have add-ons that do multiple things. Um, just because I think that you're adding too much complexity to one add-on is not the best. Um, but yeah, that's my overall consensus about Billy. Uh... Go on ahead and let me know if you guys have... Let me go ahead and put in my other screen here. Go ahead and let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Uh, if you guys have any type of discussion points you want me want to shoot at me, feel free. Um, after this, I'm going to show a side-by-side -side of all of the Overdrive add-ons back-to-back with no commentary. Um, so you can see with and without. Um, and it's just going to be getting into Overdrive and then uh, kind of showing you how the bar looks. Um based on the condition that the add-on gives, just to show how much value or how little value they actually give um, compared to off-brand motor oil. Um, but I will see you guys later. You guys have a good one. If you guys want to see me live, I do stream on Twitch, so go on ahead and follow that. Um, if you guys want to follow any more of my content, feel free to subscribe. I also post a lot on Twitter, so that's going to be down in the description. I love you guys very much. It has been Helios. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. All right, so I'm just going to kind of let these add-ons speak for themselves. This is basically just kind of explaining what they do. Um, the descriptions will be on screen here, and the, we'll have some timers here just to kind of demonstrate what the, what these add-ons uh, actually do in terms of time. Uh, but the issue with these overdrive add-ons, for the most part, is that they are only really useful if you go long periods of time without using your chainsaw. Um, and the issue with that is that with Billy, you should pretty much be always using your chainsaw. There should never really be a moment where you're not using your chainsaw. Um, so these add-ons just kind of fall short in terms of how actually useful they are. Um, and, and that's basically the, the overall downside with these add-ons and why I think they should be reworked. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just going to kind of let these speak for themselves. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Twitch, I do stream live there. As I said earlier, I will see you guys later. It's been Helios. Peace out.